It is a beautiful day for the beautiful game. We're coming to you live from Orange County, California. A couple of clouds, but for the most part, blue skies, green grass, and we are ready for soccer action. Orange County SC taking on the Swope Park Rangers, a pivotal contest for OCSC. As they are currently in 10th place. Only the top eight will make the Western Conference postseason. Swope Park solidly in fourth. Sam Farber alongside David Collicutt. It is a pleasure and a privilege to have you with us here today. And David, this really is a pivotal contest for the home team. If they want to make the postseason, they have to start defending their home pitch. Yeah, they, this is their fifth game on this beautiful new facility, and they're still looking for their first win. And really, you know, this weekend, it, this is a must-win game for them if they're going to get into that top eight and make it into the playoffs. Orange County Great Park Championship Soccer Stadium, a long name, but it's a, a kind of facility that's worthy of a long name. Just a beautiful, beautiful venue here for a great soccer matchup tonight. Few players we're looking forward to watching today. Well, one we were looking forward to seeing was Lebo Moloto. Had two goals in Swope Park's most recent win. However, he's out tonight due to suspension. You know, they're going to miss him dearly tonight. Five goals, four assists. He's been really driving their offense. And, you know, that's going to be a significant challenge for Swope Park tonight, see if they're going to be able to recover from his loss. Fortunately, they have Carlton Belmar on the pitch, fourth leading goal scorer in the Western Conference. Yeah, he plays up top as a striker. You know, he's only missed one game this season. He's got nine goals, one assist. He's actually the fourth leading scorer in the Western Conference, and Rangers are going to be looking to exploit his pace on the counterattack. For OCSC, Jerry Van Avijk, the former Netherlands youth player, will be in the middle of everything for Orange County. If they're going to get a goal, he'll probably be a part of the action at some point. Yeah, he's a very explosive player. He plays up top, is sort of linking that midfield to the forward line. You know, 21 games this year, he's already got five goals, two assists. Look for him to set the tempo for the home team tonight. An all-important contest as Swope Park has come west to somewhat sunny California. At least it's dry. We are ready for soccer in just a few. We'll have the full starting lineups and the start to tonight's contest when we return here to OC Great Park Championship Soccer Stadium for USL action. Cal South is the official state association for soccer in Southern California with 154,000 youth players. We have soccer opportunities for all ages and skill levels. Our recreational leagues focus on creating a balanced and competitive setting. The CalSouth Pro Plus program is the most progressive, inclusive, and successful youth player identification system in the US. Visit calsouth.com, connect, and join us. CalSouth, excellence in soccer. You're young, you're busy, we get that. You don't want to think about healthcare until you need it. But when you do need it, Hogue will make it easy by providing convenient, reliable care that's tailored to you. We're here when you need us, with same-day appointments at our Hogue Medical Group offices, urgent care locations open seven days a week, and phone consultations when you just can't make it in. Hogue is here for you, and will continue to be here through every exciting twist and turn along your life's journey.
are just about ready to get this thing started. Orange County SC with a 7-8-9 record taking on Swope Park, who is 13-6-6, and solidly in playoff position at this point in time. Sam Farber alongside David Collicutt. Pleasure and a privilege to have you with us here tonight. Let's take a look, David, at the Swope Park starting lineup. You know, this is going to be an interesting uh, lineup to see. They're going to come in with a very attacking formation where they're going to try and hit the uh, home team on the break. they got a lot of speed up top. Look out for Carlton Belmar. We talked about him in the intro, but Awasa up front too, a lot of speed, and Oliveira down the right side. They're going to try and get an early goal in this game. Orange County SC has some new players. They're integrating into the squad, but they are individuals that can certainly have an impact tonight. Who stands out in their starters, David? Well, you know, we got to look for Irvin Parra. He's he's already got six goals, six assists, but he's coming into, you know, a new team. He's got to settle in. This is only his third game, um, but he's a significant player. You know, they're going to have to take this tempo to start the game, build up and get a goal early as well as the home team. They want to make that start, but it's going to be it's going to be tricky for Irvin slotting into that new lineup and, and linking with his teammates. The head coaches for tonight's contest. We've got Nikola Popovich for Swope Park, his first year at the helm of the Rangers, and also in his first season, Logan Poss for Orange County SC, the former Chicago Fire star. We are just about ready to kick things off. The locals out. This is again a brand new facility here at Orange County Great Park. Irvine kind of well known to continue to build up uh, in terms of residential units and now adding this Literally great park filled with athletic venues and this the biggest and best of them all. We're excited to be here for you today. Rami Toshan is our referee and he is in the middle of the pitch. Just about ready to get things underway. Orange County wearing the black uniforms tonight, the orange numbers. Orange unis with the white shorts for Swope Park. Not every day you get two teams with orange as the primary color. Yeah, it's very uh, it's very Dutch. It is very Dutch. We've got a couple Dutch players in this game, too. We're underway. USL action from OC Great Park Championship Soccer Stadium. All played back all the way to the keeper and some early pressure coming from OCSC. It's a team that does have quite a bit of speed on it. But really, you were talking while we were off air, David, it's Swope Park that tends to be that, that counter punch that likes to send it over the top. Yeah, we saw that early pass right there. That That's typical of that play. They look to uh, hold possession deep and then try and hit with that speed over the top in that counter attacking style. Old Park in control in the middle. Yeah, Coach Paul, sir, before the game, I was talking with him a little bit, and he's a little wary. Uh, this field is quite a big field. They're just adjusting. It's only their fifth game on this field, but the expansive facility is going to allow the visitors actually to exploit that speed over the top. A minute in, and so far it's just been Swope Park playing catch, and OCS, he trying to play catch up. Here's a takeaway and a foul call. Foul goes on Frankie Olive. One of the Dutch players in today's game. Indeed, they feel very at home in these team colors. <laughs> Lots of pressure early on from OCSC and they force a turnover. Yeah, I'd, I'd expect uh, Orange County to set the tempo here tonight. For them, it's really a must win game. So they can't afford for the visitors to control the tempo. It's been a long time since OCSC has picked up a win. Been over a month since their last victory. That was July 29th at home against the Vancouver Whitecaps FC2. And that was not even in this venue. This venue is really just a month old. That's right. They've also uh, 
I'm sure there's memories of the first time this team played where uh, Rangers scored in the uh, in the opening salvo. I think th third minute of the game they they went ahead. We got control pretty much for 80, 90 percent of the first two and a half minutes thus far. This is Tyler Pasher. Pasher with control, plays it to Oliveira. Try and center the ball. Belmont out wide. CSC continues to put heavy pressure on, but the Rangers continue to find passing lanes. Yeah, Rangers have definitely settled well into the early part of this game. Here we have a takeaway and a foul call drawn that time by Olive. His 10th start of the season. First year playing in the U.S. He'd been playing in either the Dutch top or secondary league throughout the rest of his professional career. Interesting to note, Sam, you know, the two teams have two different lineups here tonight. Visitors coming in with a 4-3-3 attacking formation. There's a lot of pressure up top there, whereas the home team is standard, more standard 4-4-2. Swole Park coming off a victory against OKC Energy FC. That was at home at Children's Mercy Victory Field. Played all the way over to Van Avik. Now some control for OCSC. An errant pass that time from Oscar Sorto. He'll go all the way back to the goalkeeper, Charlie Lyon, who started every game this year. You know, Orange County say they like to possess the ball. They like to play a passing game. But Swope Park put a lot of pressure with those three forwards. The fullbacks really don't have a lot of time on the ball to pass the ball around. Joe Franco to the side for Van Avik. Nice footwork. Midfielder trying to go upfield looking for Pacheco and to unable to connect. Turnover back to SPR. The yeah, Rangers that time not opting for that early ball. Try to keep possession. Now they're on the move. Good takeaway that time for OCSC. Almost gave it right back. Go all the way back to Lyon, who will just boot it out of bounds. From the far side, Colton Storm will throw it in. Ball played up to Felipe Hernandez, and now back out towards the center line. And that today, Andrew Dykstra, a rare start for him for Swope Park. Continue to get him involved. Five and a half minutes into the action, we're yet to see a shot on goal. Yeah, a lot of possession, a lot of movement. Both teams just trying to settle into the pace of this field. All played out wide. And unable to control it on the far side. It's a takeaway for OCSC and then a foul drawn. Referee looked like he might have a quick word there. It was definitely a pullback. Maybe uh, could have pulled a card. Decided not to. Carlos Alvarez drawing the foul. Making his 13th start of the season. Here's Sorto. Sorto upfield looking for Van Dyck. And this is going to settle in near the corner flag. Centering pass, header attempt is off the mark. Van Ivik there exploiting his uh, speed on the right flank. Something Coach Paws had said he was looking to do today was get some uh, quality service in from the sides of the field. Walk Walker Hume, the intended recipient. It looked like he got a, a glance at it, but couldn't put it on net. Yeah, might have taken a little deflection there. So our first real scoring chance actually goes to the team that hasn't been able to possess the ball very much. Orange County SC and Swope Park, we are scoreless still. Asher on the left side. Go 
goes to Oliveira and then Duke. Out of bounds, last touch by OCSC. Turnover. Good header by Balio. Omar Balio gets it forward, taken right back by OCSC. Finally, some control. Swope Park into the open field. Pasher just outside the box, towards the center. Now inside the box and quickly booted away by OCSC. And Dweik will send it out wide. Yeah, the early exchanges, Swope Park have been the more patient of the two teams. I was looking for them to hit the ball on the break, but actually they've possessed the ball a lot more than Orange County so far. The one player you'd look to get a nice early touch in, and you mentioned him earlier as Dijkstra in goal. He really hasn't had much to do yet. He'll be a little nervous. Hasn't played many games this year. And Avic out wide. Keeping the pressure up with Hume. And a takeaway for Swole Park. All headed down by the back line for OCSC. The one scoring opportunity, Van Avik with the center from the near side flag. Some possession finally for OCSC. Pineda out wide. And now here's a takeaway, Swope Park. Possible odd man run. They get on the counter attack. Ball booted forward and it'll go right to Charlie Lyon. 25-year-old keeper handles it easily enough. Nine and a half minutes in, we're scoreless. Sam Farber, David Collicutt here with you at Orange County Great Park Championship Soccer Stadium. Nice touch there from Van Dijvik. Linking nicely down the right side. Belmar bringing the ball up the pitch. He really hasn't had much to do so far. As you mentioned earlier in the initial meeting this season, a 1-1 tie. Belmar had the goal four minutes in. Gives Swope Park the advantage. That was a near turnover there. It was in the range for Van Avik if he wanted to make a run at it. Swope Park just Happy to knock the ball around. Go to Baranthan. Your side. Asher. Some good possession here. Duke playing it forward, looking for Tyler Pasher. Yeah, they're trying to exploit his speed, just pop him in over the top of the defense, try and catch him off guard, but they've seen this before. Nicely organized. Coach paused. They're ready to counteract that little ball over the top. Charlie Lyon, native of St. Charles, Missouri, will send it deep. Hume right up into the night sky. Ball headed down. Control momentarily went to Hume, then taken away quickly by Swoop Park. Swope Park are playing a fairly high line in their defense, kind of squeezing this game into a small area, not allowing Orange County to get too much possession. Ball forward, Iwasa. Ball lost, foul called, and this is going to go against Orange County SC, an opportunity. Here for Swope Park, Kevin Oliveira drawing the foul. John will mark off the distance. <laughs> Looks 
like Oliveira will stand over him. He's about 30 yards out here. Three-man wall. And he sends it hot. A little optimistic. Challenge there is from that far out. He's got to get it up and over the wall with enough power to beat the keeper at the near post. So still scoreless 13 minutes into the contest. Free kick opportunity for Swole Park. Their best chance at a goal here is an opportunity on the run out. Some extra pressure for OCSC. Swole Park not exactly organized, and they'll have to just send it deep. Headed upfield by Franco. Looking for Van Avid just too far in front. And cleared away by Swole Park. You know, Sam, I've noticed a couple of times some of the passes falling a little short. I don't know whether it's the, the surface, maybe the ball holding up a little bit. There's been a couple of near interceptions. Dykstra had to handle that one off the back line. Andrew Dykstra filling in for Adrian Zendejas, who is the normal netminder for Swole Park. Yeah, Zendejas actually had seven clean sheets prior to this game, second in the conference. It's going to be interesting to see whether Dykstra can fill those boots today. OCSC wouldn't mind seeing a, a netminder who wasn't at top form. They've struggled to score goals, had not scored more than one goal in a contest since July 22nd. That was a win over Rio Grande Valley FC. More than a month since the last win, more than a month since the last multi-goal effort for OCSC, and yet they're still in the playoff hunt, currently sitting in 10th position. Need to be in the top eight to advance. Opportunity for Van Avick. Van Avick trying to get behind the defense and two Swope Park Rangers get to him. Centers the pass. This is Pineda. Far side, chipped in, handled, settled. Shot is saved away. Dykstra kicking it wide. Irvin Parra was behind the defense. Yeah, it was caught offside by the assistant referee. You mentioned a talented player who spent most of the season in Seattle. Here you get another look at it clearly behind. But again, earlier in that attack, Van Ervik again down this right side. Nice little link up play. Definitely looking to exploit that on the right side. Get some service in from the right flank. Quarter of an hour into the books. And even though Swope Park has maintained most of the control, the better scoring chances have really come here for OCSC. There was a potential one for Swope Park, just kicked into the waiting arms of Charlie Lyon. And right away, a giveaway right back to Swope Park. Hernandez on the far side. And we'll go over the end line. Again, trying to exploit the space in behind the fullbacks. Something that Orange County's wary of. Nice shape, was able to shepherd that ball out for a goal kick. So Carlton Belmar jogging back there. Yeah, a lot of pace up front for Swope Park. That's what they're looking for. Lots of movement up top. Sneak that ball in from a midfield through ball in behind the fullbacks. Lions goal kick. Header controlled by Swope Park. Two teams playing volleyball, basically, kicking it back and forth. Finally out of bounds to Swope Park. What's been good from Orange County so far is that, that they've got good shape and defense. They're definitely well organized. Swope Park, the first look is always that long ball. And so far, it's not been available to them. Para off the turnover, sending it out wide. Left side, they've got Joe Franco in the middle of the field. Instead, they're continuing to contend with the pressure. Given over to Pineda, now back to the back line. Sorto stepping up. Sorto taking the space. 
out wide, and they do find Franco. Back to Van Ave. And he wanted Para there. A little ambitious to send it that far wide of the penalty box. It's a long run for Para to get there and to have any opportunity to do anything with the dip. Yeah, it was a little misread there. I think the ball was actually to the far post. It was almost a dummy run into the near post to pull a defender out of position. Van Ivik didn't see it, but there was a player open at the far post. Maybe an opportunity missed. 50-50 ball, won by Swope Park, and immediately give it away. Trying to weave through traffic, and it's turned over to Barnantham. CSC gets it right back. Yeah, lots of movement from Van Ivick. He's in and out of that forward and midfield line, causing trying, some issues. Trying to get it to Para again, pardon me. Ball settles down. Shot from just outside the box is saved by Dykstra. Yeah, good confidence there from Pacheco there. Moved that ball inside onto his right foot. Hit that pretty hard. Just need a little more dip on that. Really hard for the goalkeeper when that ball bounces right in front of him. That one was a comfortable height for the save. Just want to attempt to go over the top. Oseguida able to head it out of play. Oseguida, a local. He's from Riverside. Former member of the USA national youth program under 18s, 20s, and 23 teams. And a lot of youth players here tonight for a special, uh, special occasion. A lot of AYSO players in. Great to see some of the uh, local talent here on display. And it really is a, a gorgeous facility here with lots of youth fields nearby. Chance to dream about playing on the big field. Oliveira out wide to Asher, back to Oliveira in the box, takes his shot. And knocked down by the defense, still controlled by Swope Park. Duke out wide to Pasher. Pasher back to Duke. Pressure coming from Van Avick. Forces him to give it up to Barantha. Now back to the back line. 20 minutes in, no score. A little extended run of possession in the OCSC third for the Rangers. Pasher making a run on the near side. They don't find him. Barantham still in the middle. Now out wide to Pasher. Tyler Pasher centering it over the top and headed out of play. And that one might have gone out first. Yes, the side judge saying that Pasher was not able to get that centering cross before it leaked over the end line. Interesting in the early exchanges, again, look at Orange County. They're sitting kind of deep, wary of that ball over the top that Rangers are looking for. That's giving Rangers a lot of possession in defensive areas. So they're able to control the play, able to dictate the tempo, move the ball around, not really gaining too many yards, but able to really just, as the visiting team, control this game this far. Teams played to a draw in their first meeting. It was a 1-1 tie. OCSC, a lower scoring side, certainly has been over the last six weeks. Swope Park, the more explosive offense of the two. They've scored multiple goals in three of their last four games, but only one win to show for. All centered in the box and easily knocked away now not so easily miscommunication there lion kept diving out the defenseman ends up hanging on anyways now we've got a whistle and this is going to be against orange county sc so a free kick possibly david just outside the range of any of these players but close enough to make an issue for Lyon if they can get a good crossing pass. Yeah, it, uh, I think it's an indirect free kick. Couldn't quite tell what that was for. The referee certainly indicated indirect initially. Kevin Oliveira standing over. 
youngster, 21 from Cape Verde. Nope, direct free kick. Three-man wall set up. Oh, it has a <laughs> referee indicated indirect initially, then put his hand down and then re-indicated it right before the kick was taken. So he missed about a word. Shot ends up blocked anyways. Pacheco running it up. Had Franco on his right side. Pacheco now sends it into the box. Nice header looking for Van Avik, but well handled by Swope Park. Anthony sending it over the top. They were looking that time for Carlton Belmar. Yeah, trying to exploit his speed. But again, I've been really impressed with Orange County's defensive formation. Midfield sat nice and compact. The defenses look pretty organized. Really nothing too much for Rangers to, although they've had a lot of possession, really nothing too much to worry the goalkeeper. Much higher line from Rangers and defense. Trying to squeeze the game up. Oscar Sorto, former MLS player with the LA Galaxy. To the sideline for Joe Franco, who launches it off the back. Looked like it came off the shoulder blades and not off the head of Cameron Iwasa. Now a giveaway back to Swope Park. They'll play it all the way to Dykstra. Yeah, Rangers there targeting Franco, allowing the ball to be played out to the right side of defense and then flooding that zone, trying to win possession back quickly, which they did. Kevin Oliveira and Carlton Belmar tend to be the players up front for Swope Park. This time they're sending a deep looking for Belmar. Can he control it before the sideline? No, and it will be turned back over to OCSC. Gained good speed, but well corralled. Nothing going from over that. Orange County get the ball back. Van Avik into space. Taken up by Pineda, back to Van Avik and to Franco. Van Avik seems to have a nice free roll. He's moving in and out of the midfield. We've seen him on the right flank. We've seen him drop into the center. Interesting mix of players we have on the pitch tonight as well, David, with OCSC. You've got uh, quite a few guys who have been up in the MLS or controlled by MLS squads. Here's an opportunity on the far side for Orange County SC. Ball centered. Dykstra watches Van Avick takes a whip at it, and it is locked out of bounds. Tyler Pasture giving up the body and getting in the way. It'll be a corner kick for Orange County. Yeah, Coach Logan Pauls would be happy with that. That was something he was looking for, that move down the, one of the flanks ball into the middle. Van Avik had a chance, but nicely blocked. Van Avik probably lucky that it was deflected, did not appear to be on target. OC corner kick opportunity. Sent into the box and the header is wide off the near post side the attempt was intended for Rodrigo Pacheco yeah a little challenging that the ball was a little bit behind him when, when you make that vertical leap and you've got to jump away from the goal it's hard to get the speed and direction on the ball to get it on frame ideally there you'd look to flick that ball perhaps towards the far post maybe get a second head on it to get it into the goal all sent over the top, well weighted for Iwasa. Iwasa against two OCSC defenders cannot maintain control and it's sent back. Orange County weaving around, it's Pacheco. Pacheco forwards to Van Avick. Yeah, Pacheco did really well that held play up nicely, kept possession and now here comes Orange County down the left flank. 
Just outside the box, centering pass, sent in. And Dykstra goes up, gets a touch, and a foul is going to be called. That was loose for a long time. Irvin Parra lurking in the area. Yeah, delivery on that ball was a little slow. I wanted that ball to be whipped in. It was really a little floater and allowed Dykstra to come in and make an easy claim. That ball's got to come in a lot faster. So we're still scoreless. 28 minutes in. More of the possession to Swope Park, more of the scoring opportunities to Orange County. Pasher on the near side. He's got some room to run here. Tried to center the pass and a good step up from the defensive line by Orange County. Pacheco. Play it back to Pineda. Pineda making his 17th start of the season. Former MLS player with the Chicago Fire, the club of his manager. <laughs> County there with a little turnover had an opportunity to spring a counterattack down the right side. It wasn't spotted. We had a nice vantage point from up here looking down on the field, but sometimes a lot harder when you're down at field level. Pacheco calling for the ball on this right flank. Definitely some open space. This is a nice wide field. It's a good 75 yards wide. Plenty of room out there to exploit space on the flanks. Charlie Lyon. Taking his time. Lyon it's enjoying his. Unable to control it is Pacheco. Lyon enjoying his time, I'm sure, as captain tonight. Stepping up wearing the armband. You know, every goalie I've ever known always wants to come out on the field and play, so I think he was just enjoying the moment with the ball at his feet. No pressure from anybody. We reach the 30-minute mark, still scoreless. Swole Park number four right now in the Western Conference. And here is a run. Inside the box. And no foul called there. That was Felipe Hernandez trying to charge through. Little bit of contact, but I believe the referee saw Hernandez initiating it. Yeah, and that's, that's nice play. I say a little dribble penetration from midfield. It breaks down that defensive uh, stance that Orange County is set up. They're really set up to stop the ball over the top. But a little movement and a dribble out of midfield could break that down. Oscar Sorto was there on defense. Launch it forward to Para. Para had to go down to the ground and comes right to his feet. Control to Orange County. Van Avick again in space on the right side over here. Franco has it, is looking at him, has to play it back. Now they go forward looking for Van Avick and a nice touch by Pasher to break it up. Ball sent deep for Belmar. Yeah, you get a little look at that pace there. A lot of pressure dealt with well by Orange County. Chaco almost turns it over. OCSC will send it deep. Looking for par over the top. Couple of defenders there. Van Orange Avick's County open. still with control. Van Avick there. Nice movement. Not spotted again on the right side. Para. In and out of the box. Nice back here. Alvarez. This one will be centered. Van Avick is waiting, trying to get ahead to it, and it's deflected. Last touch by Van Avick wide of the net. Yeah, the one thing that's not in Van Avick's favor is he's not a particularly tall player or physical player. He's got speed, got great uh, skill on the ball. Not necessarily the person you want to be leaping in at the far post for the header. And he's five foot eight, 141 pounds, so not exactly the weight to throw around there. Also, he. Just doesn't have any header goals this year. Everything's been off the right foot. Yeah, he's. I, I've liked him so far. He's been very busy in this game. Orange County's got to look to break him free. A couple of times he's he's picked up some nice positions and he's not been spotted by his teammates. This play by Swope Park. It'll be saved from the sideline. 
Played back to Dykstra by Liam Doyle. Orange County, that's stepping up quite a high line for the first time as that bull went back. Into the middle, this is Oliveira. Plays it out wide. Oliveira again with the blonde hair. A little bit of a swipe there. Referee noticed. Didn't whistle anything. Ball was loose in the box and cleared by Orange County. Yeah, wondering, Sam, if the uh, referee might I just have a quiet word that. Often, if it's not on check, can lead to a retaliation, and we don't have anybody uh, taking an early bath tonight and leaving the game. Oliveira pulls it over. This is Duke. Duke backing into the defender, and he was allowed to back himself all the way into the pitch. Take away and a trip up, and this could be a penalty. I think that's going to be the first that cut. A flag. My apologies. Yep, first yellow of the game. Liam Doyle is assessed the yellow card. Oliveira forcing the action. Doyle, the 24-year-old from Isle of Man in the UK. In terms of uh, Swope Park, that's not a bad foul. Certainly uh, left exposed. If he'd have been beaten that, it could have been a real chance for Orange County to exploit. So took the yellow card for the team. Allows this team to set back up again on defense. Our first booking of the contest comes at 34 minutes, 7 seconds. Joe Franco will send it in, the 27-year-old from Monrovia. Sends it back to Sorto instead. And a turnover almost. Orange County, a little lucky that didn't end up worse. Alvarez sending it forward on the far side. Back into the middle, and it'll be an easy takeaway for Swole Park. Oliveira in the middle. Christian Duke got wide to Pasher. Again, Orange County content to let Swole Park knock the ball around the midfield third. Sent forward looking for Cameron Iwasa. And off an OC player out of play on the sideline. About even with the top of the penalty box. Ball settled. And a shot taken by Belmar right in front of a defender, though that one had no chance to get through. Play it all the way back to Dykstra. Nice, comfortable night for some soccer action here in the United Soccer League, OCSC. And Swole Park scoreless so far. Swole Park, the more high-powered offense of the two teams, especially in the last couple of weeks. They're also the team much more comfortably in the playoff picture in fourth place in the Western Conference. OCSC with some work to do. They are in 10th. With the season starting to whittle down. And I, think, over to I think that contentment in that fourth place is really what we're seeing. There's a shot taken that ends up fading well wide. There's no real urgency in Rangers' attack. They're just happy to knock the ball around. But, you know, I think quite frankly, a, a point away from home will do them quite nicely in the position they're in. It's Orange County that's got to put the uh, put the ball in the back of the net tonight. It's a 
Dakota Barant and the 22-year-old out of Virginia Commonwealth University, VCU. A couple of Rams on this Swope Park slide. Van Avick into the box. Van Avick takes a shot at it and it's off the side netting. Yeah, it was a nice effort, Van Avick, that. Sort of an opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one with a left fullback. Slipped it to his right foot. Difficult chance to beat the keeper on the near post. It's just about where he wants to be. Wants it on his right foot. Likes it in the box, obviously. He had space and time. All sent over the top, Belmar. Belmar. It's a pass off, an ill-advised touch there from OCSC. It's still loose. Belmar gets it over. Oliveira takes a swing, and it misses wide. And my apologies, not Oliveira on that one. That was Felipe Hernandez, the Colombia native. Hernandez there able to exploit what really has been one of very, very few mistakes from Orange County in defense. Little miscommunication. Caught a little flat-footed. Luckily for Orange County, the ball went wide. It's a goal kick. A slide tackle on the far side for OCSC. Now out of play. Last touch by Orange County. I'd like to see Van Ivick get a little more support up top. He's, he's played really nicely, but he needs to deliver that ball into the box a little quicker. He hasn't had a lot of support to kind of break down that Rangers defense. The ball's got to come in just a little bit earlier. Oliveira could not control it. Turnover to Orange County. He promptly give it right back. Christian Duke on the far side. Into the box. A nice job by Charlie Lyon to go up and get it. Six shutouts this season for Lyon. This is his 25th appearance. He's been in every game for OCSC, and really, with the lack of offense, he's had to be perfect for them to get a win. Part of the reason why they haven't won in a month. Yeah, and, and I think he's an obvious choice with uh, take over the captain's armband when Chaplow's out. He's that ever-present real leader in defense. And that was a nice, comfortable claim. We're into the last five minutes now before halftime. It's that moment, it's that momentum swing going into the break. It's a great time to score a goal. It's interesting. OCSC certainly seems to have had the, the stronger back line for the most part and the better attack. It's everything in that middle 60% of the field that Swope Park is controlling. Yeah, they've controlled it. They've certainly had the majority of possession. And they seem content with that. And that's typically how these games go with Rangers on the road. It's really up to the home team to kind of drive the offense. Of course, with the speed that Rangers has up top, it's hard for Orange County to commit too many players into attack and get hit on the counter. Pacheco, nice pass into the box. Van Avick back inside, oh. pushed down at the edge, and it's penalty a penalty kick. kick. Yep. Van Avick, a well-timed run, and he draws the penalty. I'm interested to see what the referee's going to give. Is he going to give a card there, too? Because that, that was like a, an arm, definitely straight out there. He's having a word. Tushan is the referee. It doesn't appear he's going to give any extra booking, but penalty kick is coming up. It's clearly a foul, clearly in the box. It didn't necessarily appear to be enough for a yellow card. Let's take a second look, David. Yes, it's full come in, but a nice first touch. Yeah, there was an arm out there. He, he could have given a card for that. Really just poor. Poor push off by Pasher at that point. 
Yeah, was Van Avik's nice. going to be lucky just to put it back in a play. Yeah, Van Avik, a nice first touch. That just faked a little little look inside and then took his first touch nicely around the defender. Now he's got a chance to put it in the back of the net. Former Netherlands youth star Van Avik. Chance to put OCSC on top. Dykstra in the net. And there it is. Come as you like. Dykstra pointing at Van Avik after he picks up the ball after scoring the first goal of the contest. Sixth goal of the season for Van Avik and Orange County holds a 1-0 lead. Yeah, and he's been player of the game so far for Orange County. Been very busy. And that was a nice play. He he earned that himself. A beautiful little first touch. Faked the defender out, drew the foul, and then was able to put home a nice solid penalty kick. A lot of AYSO players right behind that goal. Got a good look at that ball sail into the net. And the perfect moment to score that goal. Hopefully they can uh, just see it out into the uh, into the break now. Only a minute away from whatever stoppage time there will be, and there really shouldn't be much. Been very few stoppages in play, a fairly free-flowing first half. Orange County getting the goal. The challenge in the middle by Sua. Check that. Avic on the near side ball into the box. OCSE having to play over some streamers after the goal. A little local celebration down there. Great to see the fans enjoying soccer here in Orange County. Official getting in the way of the play there for a moment. Just about at the edge of full time in the first half. Shot attempt booted away. Reflection off the attempt from Oliveira. Reach the 45 minute mark, see how much added time there will be. Again, probably not much, one minute shown by the fourth official. Oliveira in the middle. Van Avik wants to make one last run, Van Avik. They're going to send it to him. It's a great pass. And oh. he was offside. Marginally. Again, we just, just a little delay on that pass was costly because he was inches offside that. Van Avik finding some, a lot of space down this right side. This team's got to find that a little quicker. Just a few seconds left here in the first half. 1-0 Orange County SC. Swope Park ahead to Oliveira. Going to have time for one last go at it. Forward. Puts it at the feet of Belmar. Belmar in the box. Back to Oliveira. He'll center it. Back to Oliveira. Oliveira. In a sea of OCSC players. They'll kick it deep, and that'll do it for the first half. Yeah, that last play there by Oliveira is something that Swole Park's got to look to use a little more in the second half. That dribble penetration, the little give and go moves. They certainly have not been very good with the ball over the top, and Orange County's defense has been able to close them out, really. Well, a solid first half of action here in the USL. The possession really controlled by Swole Park. They did a good job in midfield, just not enough at the forward end to really make anything of it. Yeah, when they got to the final third, they were found lacking, quite frankly. And Orange County very well organized in defense. They knew what was going to be uh, coming to them tonight. A lot of speed, that early pass, that breakaway, and they were able to close it down. Jerry Van Avike, the goal on the penalty with just a couple minutes left in the first half, and we have reached halftime. We'll come back, give you some highlights, some stats. After a Solid first half of action. The home side looking for their first win here at OC Great Park Championship Soccer Stadium, and they're in position for it. one nothing in favor of Orange County Soccer Club.
When you're responsible for your family's health, you need a partner you can trust. Let Hogue Medical Group guide your way to award-winning physicians and specialized services, access to Chalk Children's and convenient urgent care locations. Hogue has been recognized as one of the best regional hospitals by U.S. News and World Report. Get the peace of mind that comes from knowing your whole family receives the care they need at Hogue. Perfect night here in Orange County. Sam Farber alongside David Colley. You have a little crispness of fall, which in Orange County means you put on a long sleeve t-shirt. <laughs> Temperature dropping now must be, uh, what, about 72 degrees, I'd say? Yeah, not enough to alter the play of these youngsters. The future of the USL on the pitch right now. The present belongs to Orange County SC, a game they really need to have. They are two spots out of a qualifying position for the postseason. A win tonight would go a long way, and right now they're in a good spot for it. one nothing the score. Jerry Van Avike on the penalty shot, giving OCSC the lead. When we return, we will have some highlights. We'll have first-half stats for you, and we'll have, of course, the second half of tonight's contest still to come. For now, Sam Farber, David Cullicutt saying hang around. More USL action after the break. Why do you not get me? I do. This is what it feels like for kids with learning and attention issues. Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. <laughs> I'm a retired school psychologist, and helping people was my thing. I was very independent and thought I could take care of myself. I fell and I had to have Meals on Wheels. After my stroke, when Meals on Wheels started, I was on the other end of the stick, so to speak. Meals on Wheels, coming to my door as someone who's housebound, having someone check on me, assures me that I'm not forgotten. Meals on Wheels has given me a mode of freedom that I wouldn't have otherwise. We are the clients. We are the clients. We are the clients of Meals on Wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. We'd do anything for kids. Thanks for helping us. Yet one in six children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. What's been, what's been unusual is that we gelled from the beginning. And since then, it's carried on throughout the season. It carried on through preseason, and then now we're we're continuing. Now we're getting towards the end of the season. Yeah, when the group got together down in preseason, uh, and we were training with the first team, uh, we were kind of just looking around, like, yeah, we got a good squad, you know. Like when we when we get back, and it's just the Monarchs, uh, we have a team that can do something really special. Uh, and so having that time together in preseason and, and pushing ourselves against RSL and against the first team guys was a great experience and opportunity and kind of gave us some bonding heading into our season uh, and, and we knew we had we had a special group. 
you can't just look at it as a slice, right? Because the investment is the club as a whole and building integration at every level. If you're going to think that way, you have to build the facilities, you have to invest in the team, you have to do everything that you need to do to make sure that at every level you're driving success. And I think that's what we've done. I think um, there's a standard throughout the whole organization there from top to bottom. Um, and I think with, with the, the new facility, um, that's only going to increase the level, only going to increase the standard and the quality of everything within the club. Purpose built for USL. Uh, it'll be a fun game experience. It'll be a nice place for them to have a home field. Uh, and it'll be right at the training facility, which will be great. This is the next step, obviously, with the academy being there. The Monarchs will be there. The first team will be training there. But this is unlike anything else in the USL. And I think it's going to be a big game changer for us. And so now to have our own place that's not going to be as big, but it's going to be just as full, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to be incredible for the team. But for the Monarchs, it'll be great because we're getting, on average, 3,000 fans or so. And, and I think it'll be even more next year as, as the Monarchs continue to improve and kind of set the standard in the USL. The players' goals have evolved as the season has, and their expectations have got greater. And I think they now understand that until we have a USL championship, they haven't aspired or they haven't reached the goal that we ultimately want. Sam Farber and David Collicutt here with you at Orange County Great Park Championship Soccer Stadium where the home side leads 1-0 over the visiting Swope Park Rangers. And David, that first half, it's hard to say who dominated it at the back end and the front end it seemed like OCS he had all the control Swope Park maintained most of the possession just didn't do much with it yeah Swope Park dominated the possession really that midfield third was theirs Orange County just sat back controlled the defense and then really when it mattered up front they got the ball in the back of the net and that's what really counts let's take a look at the first half highlights here a, a lot of possession quite honestly for Swope Park which they did a very good job of handling but in the end, they were faced with a couple of opportunities. This one was an offsides, actually, with Para getting in deep. But time after time, there were opportunities on net for Orange County SC. Yeah, Dykstra did a pretty good job, actually. Only his third game for the team, you know, stepping into some big shoes. But, you know, he did a pretty good job of corralling the ball, really um, claimed all the high, the high balls. He was down early. He, they looked pretty solid, but, you know, Orange County just kept plugging away and really getting the ball in where it mattered. The couple of times that Swole Park really had an opportunity was more confusion from OCSC that allowed a goal scoring opportunity than any kind of creativity, but still Swole Park did make some runs. Van Avick had that pass on the right side, and, and that happened two or three times where Van Avick got a long cross to the right side and had an opportunity to do something with it. And the third and final time was when there was not much Swope Park could do to stop him. It set up a penalty after the foul on the near side and Van Avick with the little cross step into it and puts in the back of the net. Yeah, some great skill, some real, real fancy footwork there for Van Avick. As you can see, you know, the visitors a not huge really part true. of the possession. Sixty percent almost of the possession tonight, but you can look again, zero shots on target. A lot of control, zero shots on target. Van Avik, very impressive though. Um, did a lot of work and he kept that tempo going throughout the game. He was back controlling the defensive uh, area, but then when they broke free, a lot of that offense for the home team going through his feet. As you alluded to, Swope Park really controlling the middle. Orange County getting the goal. It's a 1-0 lead on the score for Jerry Van Avijk. It is his sixth score of the season. Former Netherlands national youth player has the home side up 1-0. We'll come back at some final thoughts before we start the second half action here from the Great Park in Orange County.
Cal South is the official state association for soccer in Southern California with 154,000 youth players. We have soccer opportunities for all ages and skill levels. Our recreational leagues focus on creating a balanced and competitive setting. The Cal South Pro Plus program is the most progressive, inclusive, and successful youth player identification system in the U.S. Visit calsouth.com. Connect and join us. Cal South, excellence in soccer. One nil at half in favor of Orange County SC. Team looking for its first victory since July 29th and first win ever at their new home stadium here at Orange County Great Park. Sam Farber alongside David Coley. Cut David, there were three real pivotal moments of the first half and all of them went to Orange County SC. And, and again, we'll say it, Swope Park controlled possession most of the half, but the three big moments of the game went in OCSC's favor. The first was a yellow card on Liam Doyle on an opportunity for Jerry Van Avike to get behind the defense. Yeah, it was an opportunity to get Sorry, Pacheco. Oh, oh. Pacheco was breaking down the right side. They saw him free, and Doyle just, he, he took a little look right before that. He knew what was behind him. This was a chance for uh, Orange County to get in behind and maybe get a chance on goal, and he, he did the right thing there. took a yellow card for the team. Second one was kind of the big scoring opportunity for OCSC throughout the first half that was trying to get Jerry Van Avike on the right side. They targeted him here towards the end of the half, and a little push right there by Pasher gives up the penalty. Yeah, Van Avik there gave it, gave the fullback a little look inside. He faked it, pushed the ball to the byline, and that's what caught, caused the foul. And here he is, a little step, a little delay on the goalkeeper there, just to send him the wrong way, and a beautiful finish on that penalty kick. Cool as you like. So one nothing the score. We are ready for second half action. I hesitate to, to say that OCSC is really in control of it because Swope Park had so much possession, but what can Swope Park do to take that possession and turn it into goal scoring opportunities? Well, we saw a little bit of it in the first half there, Sam, when they started to dribble penetrate. They can't continue to try and hit long balls over the top because Orange County now, at least with that one goal lead, can sit back even more and control that, take that third of the field away from them. They've got to offer something more. Of course, as they push something more, it's going to give chances for Orange County to exploit and maybe get that second goal. Para right now with possession for Orange County SC. They are in the black uniforms tonight, wearing orange is the Swope Park Rangers. And this ball sent over the top, an opportunity for Swope Park in behind. This is Belmar, Belmar nets it. And less than a minute into the second half, Swope Park evens things up. I'm right there, Sam. That's the one thing for the first 45 minutes, Orange County had shut down. We knew Belmar's speed was gonna be a threat. They got a bit of a, it caught too far up the field, too much of a high line, left too much real estate behind the right side of defense, and a beautiful through ball, and no mistakes with the finish. Carlton Belmar, second goal this season against OCSC. Yeah, too much pace there and too much room in behind. Beautiful through ball. And now we're back. Even Stevens, one apiece. Belmar's 10th goal of the season. So we're all tied up. My next question for you is going to be, how do you create better scoring opportunities for the Belmars and the Oliveras? I think we got our answer. Well, the, the 
to be fair, they got an assist from the back line from Orange County. You know, I think they left their uh, they left their shoes in the locker room. They hadn't laced them up. They weren't ready for that first minute in the second half, and they got caught just not thinking. You know, Coach Pauls is not going to be very happy, I'm sure, on down on the bench. Here's another look at it. No one between Belmar and the netminder. Yeah, it was a nice, cool finish, but really it was the through ball to see him and the space that he had available to him. Beautiful ball, didn't need to break his stride, and a nice, cool finish. Now they're trying to get Van Avik on a similar play. Better read, though, by Swope Park. And they're not able to clear it cleanly. It's over the sideline, deep in Swope Park territory. Ara for the throw in. And just drop it off for the moment. We'll see if they've got a long throw play. Maybe Orange can get this into the box. A little flick. And Avi couldn't get on top of the ball. Goes out wide. Pineda trying to send it deep and well headed that time by Tyler Pasher. Yeah, Van Avike there, you can see strong-sided right-footed player, not quite the uh, not quite the touch on his left foot. As mentioned it before, the last time Orange County SC scored multiple goals in a game was July 22nd, a 4-0 win over Rio Grande FC. Swope Park Rangers, they're used to scoring multiple goals. They've scored two or more in three of their last four contests. You said with that kind of pace up front, that's going to deliver goals. That's that one uncoachable is that speed. And if you've got somebody who can deliver the pass in the right spot and your defense goes to sleep and gives you the opportunity, then speed kills. Challenge from behind and a foul called. Victor Pineda drawing it, former Chicago Fire player. Charlie Lyon, the netminder. No pressure from the Rangers. Happy to let him hoof that ball down the middle of the field. And that's basically a turnover. At the edge of the box, it's Dykstra. He'll launch a throw to Pasher. This near sideline, Iwasa couldn't run it down, so a goal kick. Yeah, again, it's that's the option they're looking for, but that one a little over hit. Five minutes into the second half, the answer from Swope Park. They go over the top to their main man, Carlton Belmar. Now a chance to seek him out again. Belmar, nice run on the far side at the edge of the penalty box. Yeah, the difference that time was there was support on the defensive side inside. Long-range attempt is just wide. Nice Dakota Bernathan. Yeah, that time Belmar was pushed to the outside, so the pass went to his to the left side of the field. He wasn't able to turn that one towards the goal. There was an additional covering defender in the center that pushed him out wide. On the goal he scored, there wasn't that coverage, and he was able to take that ball straight into the goal and put it in the back of the net. One poorly handled by OCSC, Juan Osegueda. He's trying to boot that ball forward, maybe not aware that he was alone with it. They get it back after the scrum for a moment, now turned right over. Dangerous territory as well. And a foul call that could have been advantage played there. Also things down, Christian Duke. All played into space, trying to find Belmar, and it was deflected. And now we've got a foul called against Swope Park, and they'll bring him back. Let's take another look at that last shot attempt, the long range one from Barnathan.
Picked the ball up, looked nice strike on the right foot, just dipping and curving away from the far post. Lion there, I think, had his post covered, but the ball just swerving last minute, taking it off the net. All caught in deflection. It looked like it came off one of the Swope Park players. Yeah, it looked like a handball from me. To, uh, I think the referee was unsighted. Wasa gets the benefit of the doubt, a little bit of a push from behind too, so probably in all fairness, it belongs to Swope Park. Again, they move forward through Oliveira, and it's cleared over the sideline, still in dangerous territory. 1-1 one, one our score. We'll see SC scoring on a penalty kick late in the first half, and early in the second, Carlton Belknap able to get behind the defense and Belmar netting his 10th goal of the season. Far nothing. Out wide for Pasher. Back to the middle. Belmar has his shot blocked. Nice footwork on the back side there by Pineda. Yeah, Victor Pineda that. A little risky to do that in the center of the defense. It's the kind of thing that uh, gets the hearts pumping on the, uh, on the coaching sideline. On the top, well headed to the keeper, Dykstra. Once again behind for Belmar. Belmar centers it. Heading attempt is over the crossbar. Well, that was a great play by Belmar. Initially, again, that ball, good cover in the middle of the field, but a beautiful ball in, and actually should have done a lot better with that. Cameron Awasa on the attempt. Yeah, Awasa had a great position, drifted in between two defenders, rose nicely, but just couldn't direct that on goal. That really could have been, and perhaps should have been, two to one to Swope Park. Quick look at the replay as the ball sent forward. Yeah, he slotted in nicely there. Wasser in between the two defenders. That's nice play from the forward. Just couldn't direct it down into the corner of the goal. Chaco trying to get loose of the defense. Two defenders around him. And he loses control. Let that one roll over the uh, sideline. It's going to be a throw in to Rangers. 55 minutes into the contest, tied at one. Liam Doyle is playing with a yellow card at the center circle, looking over the top. Couldn't thread the needle. Second attempt couldn't either. There's been a player alone on the near side waiting to make a run into the box. Yeah, and he was, Sam, he was wide open too. Two times he tried to thread that ball through. Couldn't get it through the needle. Good defense by Orange County. Para. Back to Van Avik. calls Pacheco shoved off the ball. The Orange County there putting 10 or 12 passes together. Pacheco and looking for Para skipped off a defender ball settled and a foul is called and it's on Pacheco. Yeah, Pacheco there tried just to lift that ball over with the outside of his right foot just didn't quite get it high enough. Difficult to execute while you're dribbling with the ball. Just try to flip it over and then get a little frustrated that it didn't work and 
zipped in. Can't leave your feet like that. It's going to be a free kick every time. 12 minutes into the second half. It feels, David, an awful lot like the first half, except instead of just controlling the midfield and then losing control of the ball once you throw it to the final third, Swope Park is having more control. Now an ill-advised pass, and Doyle's just going to have to clear his line. That was Hume there thinking he had the netminder to pass it to and found him out of position, almost an own goal. Yeah, Chad Line just lost his footing there a little bit. A little wheel spin in the six yard box, but he was able to recover. No harm, no foul. Going back to it though, it, again, feels like Swope Park here, in addition to just having control of the middle, they're finding some players to pass over the top yeah. to and, and maybe just figuring out the pace they need to unlock the OC defense. Into the box, and Avik will track it down. Challenge away, Pasher with the takeaway, and a foul is called on Van Avike. Yeah, I mean, the, the difference when we came out in the second half was just that one moment where they switched off and goal came. Other than that, they've seemed fairly comfortable. Orange County, nice and solid in defense. Goal scorer, Belmar, on the run. Outside, Pasher. Ball loose in the middle and a takeaway for OCSC. Getting organized. They want to go over the top. Had Oliveira on the run. So they'll settle it at midfield. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of Van Avik in this second half. He was very busy in the first 45. Clearly something that Rangers talked about at halftime. Need to shut that offensive threat down. And they've done so fairly successfully. It's kind of isolated right out on the right wing at the moment. Coming up on the one hour mark, David, is there anyone you think is likely to see a change here for the final third of the contest? Well, Orange County's got to got to get back into this game. A 1-1 game on the road. Again, a tie would be just fine for Rangers. Really, Orange County's got to take the initiative, maybe change it up a little bit, maybe put another player up front. I'm not sure a tie would really help them very much in this rush into the playoffs. Hara turns it over. This is Hernandez. Hernandez carrying it forward. Has a forward on the right side and declines to pass it ahead to Colton Storm. This time they give it to him. Storm. Poked away from behind and OCSC. Back line has been pretty tough with people coming at them. It's the lob over the top they haven't handled well. And it looks like it might be the first substitute coming up. And it's going to be Rangers. Ansel Sebo. Waiting at the scorer's table. Ansel from Yost, Nigeria. Yeah, another speedy player. Plays up top. He's got five goals so far this season, along with two assists. He's quite small, skillful, very quick. Again, a player that you're going to see if you had to cause problems on the counterattack. So Selbold checking in, Iwasa coming out. ball about the same size as Lionel Messi. We'll see if he's got the same quality in his left foot. Well, nothing against it, but my guess is no. <laughs> if Lionel Messi was here, 
You never know. Maybe the next Lionel Messi for United States soccer is right here in Orange County. It's possible. Here's a takeaway for Swope Park. Good run. But interrupted momentarily there, Colton Storm. Still time to settle it down. This is the substitution cell bowl. Getting in on the action. Tied at one. Less than 30 minutes left in regulation. Cell bowl on the run. And well defended there by Hume. It'll go over the end line for a goal kick. Yeah, Hume must be about an entire foot taller than cell ball. Easily able to corral that ball out for a goal kick. Charlie Lyon launches it towards midfield. And a foul called here. Para had the Swope Park Ranger go over the top. It's always a tough one to call when the play goes in the air and is it is it backing in and going under a play? It can be quite dangerous. That time it looks like the, uh, the officials called the foul in favor of Orange County. Thankfully, both players up and, and moving. Irvin Para, originally from Inglewood, 24 years old. So possession to OCSC, tie score, one all. There's a chance on the right side, they've got an overlap. It's Van Avike. And a bike into the box over everybody, but it'll curl in for Para. Well, Segueda into the middle, shot it right in! Beautiful header! Beautiful finish. Irvin Para, his seventh goal of the season, first one here in OC. Yeah, he came in with a reputation, six goals, six assists, and that was a beautifully timed run and an inch perfect cross. Left foot curling away from the keeper, and he rose at the back post, put that ball in the net, calm as you like. You know, we talked about Para coming into this team, it's only his third game. How would he link up with his teammates? Well, we got the answer right there. Beautifully timed, off the ground, right in front of two defenders. Nothing the goalkeeper could do about that. And Orange County back in front. And again, not to beat a dead horse, but first time multiple goals in a game for Orange County SC since all the way back on July 22nd. Now can they play a little better from in front? They led in terms of game time for all of three minutes. Granted, intermission was in between, but in terms of game action, only about three minutes OCSC enjoyed on top. Now they're trying to go over the top again to Alvarez. Alvarez denied. You know, head coach Logan Paul said right before the game, he said, the one thing we've got to watch is the ball over the top, that counter attack. We've got to be wary of that. And lo and behold, that was the first goal for Rangers. And then he said, you know, we're going to look to attack from the flank, get that ball into the box, and that's where we're going to score. And he was right. The defensive line for Orange County has been very solid with anything in front of them. It's the lob over the top that they have not handled well. So coach right on it with his team. On the other side, Swope Park's done a great job of having possession in the second half, much better at linking up with their forward players, but have had a tough time overall of denying Orange County quality opportunities. And say of the quality scoring chances, 70 to 80% of them have gone to the team in black tonight. That's right, they've really done a good job in that final third of the field, and Rangers have been a little wasteful. Oliveira trying to get loose, trying to set up the substitution sail bowl. Try 
Try to go deep to Van Avijk. Pressure on, Dykstra will have to boot it. Tyler Pasher, far side, looking for Belmar. In towards the box and a takeaway for Orange County. Coach pulls up on his feet. Bakken had a few commands. He's got his subs warming up, but nobody yet come into the lineup. Looks like maybe Rangers uh, thinking about another change. Juan Cousin is waiting at the side of his coach. He's walking over towards the scorer's table. Only a teenager get his chance late in the game. Definitely still time for more goals in this one. At least 20 more minutes of action here from Orange County Great Park Championship Soccer Stadium. They've got a whistle and a foul on OC. Whistled on Victor Pineda. Rangers with a little more urgency now. Asher Eager to take the that corner kick. flag. Asher set up for the cross. A low liner. Tipped away and cleared by Orange County. center back position. Ball into the middle, Belmar. Run by Oliveira. And almost miscleared by Orange County. Still dancing around it. Ball loose in the box. This has been a point that OCSC has not done well on some of the clearances. Now a chance to launch it forward for Van Avijk and Para couldn't connect. Yeah, other than the goal from Belmar, the most dangerous Rangers have looked is when Oliveira's picked the ball up, got the ball in front of him and run at the defense. That's when Rangers have probably had their best threat. Hussein Kumal checks in, releasing Felipe Hernandez. 70 minutes gone by. Well defended on the backside again by Hume. Yeah, Hume's looked pretty solid. I like his play. Good positioning. Able to read the flight of that ball well. Is that a cover? Two to one, Orange County SC with the lead. They had the penalty late in the first half by Van Avijk. Quick answer by Belmar to start the second half and then a headed goal for Irvin Para. About the 65 minute mark, putting Orange County back on top. And now a player down and it is the goal scorer Para. It looks like he uh, got somebody stamped on his foot there. Wasn't sure whether that was off the ball or not. The goal he scored was his first headed goal of the season. Tends to be a right-footed striker. Has finished with the left, has finished with the body, but that was his first headed goal of the season. And it was a beautiful goal. And it was terrific delivery, too. It really was put in the perfect spot. Well-directed header. Got above the ball, directed it down, made it very difficult for the goalkeeper. In fact, the goalie had no chance. They're going to have Parra step off for a moment. 
Yeah, once the trainers come on the field, it's going to have to leave the field and then be released back into play by the fourth official. We'll keep an eye on him. For the moment, he waits in purgatory. OCSC we'll will throw it in. Still being held. Now they allow him back into play after the ball goes to the back line with Sorto. Franco trying to push it ahead to Van Avike and it's cut off. Yeah, Van Avike's been man marked the second half pretty much the whole time. Cell bowl, about as much chance scoring from there as we do here from the booth. He's trying to score from 40 yards out on a ground ball. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the definition of optimistic. But that's just fine. A few more seconds tick off the clock. Orange County in control now, two to one. 73 minutes gone by. I think if we put the possession stats back up, Swope Park would probably still be around that 60 to 65% range. Yeah, they, uh, they dominated the first half. You know, it's been a little more uh, a little more even, I think, in the second half. Kuzane, the substitute, over to the far side. All turned over to Para. Yeah, with Van Avik being so closely watched, Para has really stepped his game up and has been available for his teammates to move the ball around. Chaco, no one there, taken away momentarily by Belmar, but Hume gets a touch, and it comes off Belmar out of play. And we'll have a couple of substitutions here, both to be made by OCSC. Zach Kobayashi looks like he's going to be coming in. He. Uh, Not sure who's going to be replacing yet. Also coming in, Lito Fernandez, who's a pretty good goal scorer, 27 year old, who's scored three times. And it's going to be Van Avey coming off as well as Parra. So the two forward players are going to come off the field for Orange County SC. Yeah, the two difference makers really for Orange County thus far. They worked pretty hard, put a good shift in for those 75 minutes. Now we turn it over to Walido Fernandez. Well, certainly a risk to take those two off the pitch. And Kobayashi more of a midfield player. South Orange County near Santa Margarita area called Dove Canyon. Fernandez from Cape Verde actually has been playing in World Cup qualifying. Cape Verde trying to qualify their uh, West African island nation. Yeah, they had the uh, international break this last uh, weekend, so he was away. Now back on duty here. Seeing some of the world's best here in the United Soccer League. And tonight it's 2-1, to one, OCSC with the advantage. Looking for their first win at their new home stadium. Moved in here about a month ago. Pass at the feet of Fernandez, couldn't control it. Referee getting in the way of that. Nicely done. Obayashi, the other new player in the mix as well. Seems like Fernandez is playing almost alone up top. Yeah, I think Kobayashi will slot a little bit more into midfield. Looking more like a 4-5-1 now from Orange County. Foul is called, and this is going to go against Kevin Oliveira. It 
Looks like uh, Rangers are going to throw their last uh, substitution into the game, try and turn this around. Max Rogova into the contest. And Doyle will come out. Doyle was carded earlier. It's a nice turn. Alvarez into the box. Trying to get the pass off to Fernandez. Fernandez trying to find some space. Fernandez can't control it in the end. Yeah, Fernandez just a little off the pace that. Difficult when you come in, just reading the movement of your teammates. Dangerous action here from Orange County SC. Playing around with it, that back four. But they maintain control enough. 78 minutes gone by, just about here in this USL Western Conference clash. Swope Park, number four in the standings. Right in the middle of the playoff picture. And Orange County SC in desperate need of a win. They came in tonight. And they were four points back of Phoenix Rising FC, who they just tied on the road for the eighth and final playoff position. Yeah, this is their chance to really get back into, back into contention for that, those top eight slots. You know, I'm looking at Willito Fernandez, and he's been hobbling the last minute or so, favoring that right leg. I think he may have twisted his ankle. Only just came on the field. Into the box, Hume heads it away. He hey, looks like he's shaking it off. Chip forward for Pasher, and Pasher's offsides. Yeah, I haven't seen many offsides for Rangers, and that's partly because Orange County's played that sort of deep coverage line and just closed off that. They haven't played that high line. They haven't given them that space, other than that one time when they came out at the start of the second half. It's been a nice, uh, nice play by Coach Logan Pauls. Really set his team up nicely. It goes out of bounds. Sam Farber, David Colicut here with you. Final 10 minutes approaching of regulation. OCSC with the one goal advantage. The two goal scorers have checked out of the contest for the home side. Para, who scored the one that put them in front most recently, as well as the man who scored on the penalty kick, Van Avike, both out of the game. Ball in the box, it's loose and launched into the picnic section. Yeah, I got a feeling that ball's in the carpool lane on the 405. <laughs> Fortunately, we know just like everything else on that freeway, it'll be stuck there. <laughs> there should be a, a couple minutes of extra time in this second half. We've had a couple more stoppages. First half, there was almost nothing added on. Yeah, this game's been played with very few incidents. I mean, in terms of, you know, foul play, very few. Just the one, one yellow, a few little, few little nudges here and there. Referees had a, done a pretty good job. Just had a word when necessary to play us. Just admonished Alvarez for the moment. Sent wide, Colton Storm, head to Oliveira. And Oliveira fouled, and this might be a, an accumulation here. That's gonna get either a card, or just a little bit more of a tongue lashing. Rodrigo Pacheco, not carded this time. Here's a look at it. Yeah, Oliveira is there having a little chat to the referee saying, you know, that's uh that's the third or the fourth time I've been checked like that. Maybe just reach in and get that yellow card out. Here's a nice play 
for Orange County. Two on two attack. Step in and a nice step over move there to clear that back line. It was Umar Balo getting the touch, preventing the shot opportunity. Yeah, Kobayashi there, I think, could have gone with a little more purpose and they'd sold a two on two. At that point, you just turn that into a one on one and go for goal. It's a little bit more fitting of the reputation for Orange County SC with the counterattack. Here's a ball into the box and cleared off the back line by Orange County. Seven and a half minutes left before full time. Oliveira in the middle for the substitute. Kuzan. And we'll have a foul there, a high kick, and it looks like a card might be coming out. Yeah, I think so. A little frustration that lift that foot up that high. And it will be a yellow card on cell ball, ball. looks like. Second yellow of the contest. Both have gone against Swope Park. Yeah, I think he was going for the ball, but he caught the player and his foot was a little too high, showing his studs to the player there. That's going to be a free kick and pretty much an automatic yellow card. Didn't seem like there was too much intent. Good sportsmanship after the fact. Selbo clearly did not intend it. Didn't argue the yellow, and went right to the injured player. Does offer a breather to OCSC, who's been under assault really the majority of the game. Better scoring opportunities for Orange County, but they've all come on counters or chips. The possession has been controlled for the most part by Swope Park, just not as many scoring opportunities to show for it. Now a substitution, Gustavo Villalobos, former star at Cal State Northridge. He's played professionally in Sweden and Malta. And he will come on for the final five or so minutes. He will replace Rodrigo Pacheco. So all subs are into the game. No more alterations. CSC with a one goal lead. You know, I've been impressed with Pacheco too. LAFC uh, player. Oh, here's another chance. In behind. And we're going to have a penalty kick. Selbo got behind the defense. Got pushed by Sorto after the diving attempt from Lyon. And we'll have a penalty to try and tie things up. And again, just caught lack of concentration. Cell ball, great speed, and again gets inside. Oh, that could have been on Lion actually getting a nick on it. The Lion came out. I couldn't tell on the contact there. Cell ball jumped. Now, the referee could say there wasn't contact, but he avoided contact because of the reckless challenge by the goalkeeper. Hard to tell. I've seen some of those where... There's a no call from the official. That time, pretty clear, it's called the penalty kick. Kevin Oliveira will have the attempt. Lyon has stopped one penalty this year. And he does this time. The second penalty stop of the season for Charlie Lyon keeps Orange County on top. And now they've got a counterattack. Captain Courageous. This is where Orange County just needs to relax, keep possession, don't turn that ball over. And a stoppage. Foul called against Orange County. No, sorry, offsides on Orange County. What a stop from Charlie Lyon. It 
was diving out of the way and extended his feet backwards to make contact and make the stop. Oliveira has had a terrific game for Rangers. Going to be kicking himself for that miss. Lyon did a great job. Made himself big. He hit it strong enough, just not in a position to score without really the goalkeeper moving out of the way. Give you a look at the next stoppage. Here's a turnover, an opportunity for Swope Park. Running out of time, they go down. Belmar tries to center and it's cleared out of play by OC. Let's get a look at that penalty. Yeah, Lyon sent the wrong way. <laughs> Looked like he was going down the middle, but he didn't lift the ball off the ground. That's the mistake. If you're going to go down the middle, you've got to be wary of the keeper's legs. You've got to put that ball two thirds up off the ground. Kept it too low. Lyon did a terrific job. Open storm finding substitute cell ball. Bull's got a yellow card, now a push. That's an easy call. And that's a very dangerous position. And it'll be a yellow card as well. And this is a moment where some senior leadership required in the middle of midfield. And of course, Orange County, without that, their usual captain, Lion and Goal, unable to offer that. But just a calm head, settle the ball down, keep control. As it was a reckless and needless challenge. It wasn't even that hard, it was just too obvious. Two hands extended, I don't know why you put your arms in the air afterwards. Villalobos takes the yellow. That's his first card of the season. Coming up on 89 minutes played. Scoring opportunity here for Swope Park, Oliveira, who had the penalty block, takes the shot oh. off the crossbar. That was a much better struck free kick. Had a little bit of dip, unfortunately for him. Not quite enough. Hit the woodwork, but that had pace. The keeper line was clearly beaten on that one. Referee might here caution the uh, goalkeeper for time wasting. No. He's going to caution Selbo, who is not interested in waiting around for Lyon to go get the ball and took it away from him and put it on the line for him. And he's playing with a yellow card already. The referee does have the discretion to stop the clock if he needs to. We're going to reach full time here with this ball in flight. Now we've got a foul called against Fernandez. Three minutes at least going to come on the clock. Maybe more. We're going to add one more, four minutes of stoppage time. This is where Orange County have got to keep their heads, keep their shape. Right now, look for midfield support. Don't turn the ball over. Fernandez in control, sends it wide to Villalobos. Villalobos has Alvarez running along with him. Villalobos right, in the oh. middle. Villalobos. Still with control, and he'll carry it outside. And they turn it over. Two to one, Orange County SC leading, looking for their first win in a month. Well, this fourth time, they've been the most clinical out of the two teams. Vera trying to connect with Belmar there, could not. Fernandez had control, bumped, and a foul call. Selbo once again anxious to get the ball set up. And we'll kick it deep. Fernandez with the challenge. Swope Park gets control again. At least another two minutes should be left. Of course, on the field, the time is being kept right now.
foul called on Swope Park. It's at Kobayashi drawing the contact. Orange County in no rush to get this uh, free kick taken. Hume available for a back pass, and there it goes. Really want to pump that ball more towards the corner flag. Alvarez ahead, and having to come off his line was Dykstra. Villalobos was charging in. Good stop there by Osagueda. In front, Hume pops it into the sky. Belmar was the intended recipient. Settles down to Oliveira. Oliveira. Back to Belmar. And they clear again. Another minute to 90 seconds likely left in this contest. They go in behind for Belmar. Belmar centers it. And it's over everyone. Too strong. Pasher will track it down before the sideline. Pasher on the give and go. And it's taken away. OC will clear. They clear out of play at Mid stripe, going to launch it, at least launch it in bounds. Yeah, Orange County kind of clinging on here. Calm heads need to prevail. Belmar in the middle, he's got the goal. And another clear for Orange County. Dykstra all the way up at midfield, the netminder. Roughly 30 seconds left in stoppage time. Not a single player from Orange County beyond their own defensive third at this point. Nobody to pass to. That's a smart play. Knock it up, Villalobos. And that'll be a throw in for Orange County. That should eat up the remainder of the clock. And that's full time. For the first time in almost six weeks, Orange County SC gets a victory. Two to one is your final score, and it is the first win. Orange County Great Park Championship Soccer Stadium. A two to one final score, the victorious goal to Irvin Parin, a homecoming return to Orange County. Indeed, he got the score in the uh, 65th minute, but it was Van Ivrick in that first half that really ran the game. And of course, the pivotal play after the goal that was scored by Belmar. It was the penalty opportunity stopped by Charlie Lyon. That was really the key play of the match as it turns out, taking what could have been a tie. Here's the goal from Para. But the save made by Charlie Lyon ends up keeping Orange County SC on top. We'll come back with full highlights in the wrap up. Two to one, the final score tonight. When I was first diagnosed, they gave me about two years to live. After they took it out, they did some additional tests and it found out that yes, it was a cancerous tumor. I had an aorta dissection and that triggered a stroke on top of it. I've been in treatment a little over two years. They saved my life. If I hadn't been pregnant, they would not have found that mess. If it hadn't been for Ben, I might not be here. It was amazing that he has knowledge to do what he has to do to save me.
County celebrating a home victory for the first time in their new home, Championship Soccer Stadium. Sam Farber, David Kolekut here with you in the OC, where a much needed victory to the home side, two to one. They started the day in 10th position, four points off the final qualifying spot for the postseason. They get the job done here tonight against a very good Swole Park Rangers squad. Yeah, for the home team, it was fifth time lucky on this field. We said it right at the start. This was going to be their game, and they came out, and they did it where it mattered. The first half, Swope Park dominated the possession, but where it really mattered in the defensive third and the offensive third, they were solid at the back, and up top, they got the goal where they needed it. Let's take a look at our final highlights. Early in the contest, as you mentioned, Swope Park controlling the middle of the field, but not able to get too many high quality scoring opportunities. Uh, in the end of the day, it was long shots for the most part and some good runs by Jerry Van Avenweik, who was able to get behind the defense a couple of times and Van Avenweik ended up forcing the only goal of the first half by getting behind for a penalty. Absolutely, he had a great game. The first 45 minutes, he ran the show. He was the offense, he was the midfield dynamo that made it all happen for Orange County. He had a terrific game on this right side of midfield. He kind of had a free roll in and out of the, the midfield and the offense. He had a great game coming in with several chances. Um, terrific right foot. And actually the uh, the move that led to the penalty kick was a terrific piece of skill. Faked the ball inside, pushed it in in transition through behind the fullback. Here he is with a little bit of foot skill. He was terrific on the ball all night. And then he was the person that had the opportunity to put the ball in the net faked out the keeper, and you can see that ball roofed into the net, not along the ground, away from the goalkeeper's legs. Late in the first half, Parra got behind the defense but was offside. Really, Van Avijk, uh, the penalty shot, the only goal of that first half. So a good run for OCSC. They take the 1-0 advantage. Early in the second half, Carlton Belmar getting the shot in for the only goal of the game as it would turn out for Pineda there with a terrific finish. Absolutely fantastic finish there. Came in, beautiful cross in, wonderfully timed run, and just put that ball clean in the corner. Goalkeeper had no chance. Irvin Parr made it two to one, then the penalty kick, and this was the play of the game. Charlie Lyon with the save on the PK that would have tied it, instead denying Swope Park. Yeah, Captain Lyon Hart there, leaving his legs to save the day. Penalty shot, when it's rolled along the ground like that, it's going to be saved by the keeper. Here's your final stats, and as we expected, Swope Park able to control the action for the majority of the game. Not as much in the second half as they did in the first, but the better scoring opportunities all went to OCSC. Yeah, OCSC definitely the more clinical. You can see the possession. Uh, OCSC uh, had a little bit more possession in the second half, which helped them a lot and brought those possession stats a little more even. A pretty, pretty simple game for the referee to officiate. Only a three cautions in the entire game. That's unusual. But really, the statistics that matter is the two goals for Orange County and only the one for the Rangers. And really, the dangerous players on the field, Kevin Oliveira and Carlton Belmar for Swope Park, they had their moments, but weren't set up quite as cleanly throughout the night. Whereas on the other side for Orange County SC, Van Avijk and Para, they did have a couple cleaner opportunities at the net. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Sam. It's, it's really the difference. There was just that one moment. I don't, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened at halftime. Maybe there was too much Gatorade drunk in the locker room, whatever it was. When they came out, suddenly they swished off for a moment, and Belmont punished them. Orange County SC, first time in over a month they score multiple goals in a game. First time in more than a month that they come away with a victory. Charlie Lyon, his second penalty save of the season, preserving a 2-1 victory for the home side. That is going to do it for us here at Orange County Great Park Championship Soccer Stadium. For my broadcast partner, David Collicutt, and our entire crew, I'm Sam Farber, saying it's been a pleasure and a privilege talking to you tonight from the OC. Some outstanding USL action, and the final score, 2-1 to one in favor of Orange County Soccer Club.
This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League may not be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the express written consent from the United Soccer League.